Hi, it's Lori from LoriStory.com. This video is the third in a series of Cricut Explore basic tutorials designed to introduce you to the Cricut Explore and Design Space software. In this video, we will be exploring the Upload Image button, which includes importing PNG, JPG, GIF, BMP, SVG, and DXF files. Let's get started. Before we get into the upload image, I would like to show you the difference between a JPEG file and a PNG file. Now if you look at this, this is a JPEG, this is a PNG, and they don't look all that different. We can move them around, they move the same, they look the same. If you consider that this is a piece of white paper and this JPEG is laying on top of the white paper and this PNG is laying on top of the white paper, they look pretty much the same. But what if we lay them on a piece of black paper? Now do you see the difference? This is one piece and it has the white background around it. This is just the letters. It is just the image without any background noise to it. And that is the difference, the main difference between a JPEG file and a PNG file. It has a, the PNG file has what's known as a transparent background. In other words, you can't see anything behind it. And the beauty of this when you're in Design Space is that Design Space doesn't have to look around this paper, the white area, and see if there's an image on it. Um, if you bring this into Design Space, and I'll show you in a minute, it's going to want to cut around the edge of this image. So you're going to get a box around this image until you clean it up and tell Design Space that no, I just want you to cut these letters. And, and you can use this, it just takes a little bit, an extra step to clean up that white space out of there. This image, if we bring this into Design Space, and again you'll see this in a minute, Design Space doesn't have to waste much time looking to see what it needs to trace because the edge of the image has already been cleaned up. So I just wanted to run you through that really quickly just to show you the difference between a JPEG file and a PNG file. This is my preferred method between the two. I would much rather have a PNG file. It just saves the cleanup. So let's get back to Design Space. All right, let's get started. In today's video, we are going to explore the upload image button. Well, let's click on it. Okay, first we're going to look at the basic upload. And the basic upload is where you upload a JPEG file, a GIF file, a PNG file, or a BMP file from your computer. We're going to first look at uploading a JPEG file. And this method is going to be the same for a GIF file and a BMP file. So the first thing you need to do is click on Upload Image. And it gives you directions here. Create a cut path from, three image, from an image in three simple steps. One, you're going to select your image. Two, you're going to clean your image up if you need to. And three, you can save the image into your project. So let's click Continue to step one. First thing we need to do is navigate to where our image is. So we're going to click on Browse. And I'm going to go to my desktop, and we are going to use a .jpg file, JPEG. Click on it, open. Now you have three choices. You have a simple image, and it gives you an example. A simple image is going to be something that doesn't have a lot of detail. There's not a lot of, you can see the difference in the flower. Here it has some detail, here it's just a very plain basic outline. Quite honestly, I almost always just use complex because I'm going to get the most detail out of my image. But you can try these different ones just to see what happens. But let's click on complex and we're going to click continue to step two. And now you see, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole image. As I showed you in the previous part of the video, the difference between a JPEG and a PNG file, you can see we imported the white background along with our image. 
And we don't want to cut that. If we were to just import this without cleaning it up at all, it's going to provide a cut line right around here. And you can see that by just hitting the I, the preview. And that's all that the software is seeing right now as a cut line. That's the edges of the image. And we don't want that. We want to cut the entire, all the letters out. So what we can do is click on this cleanup tool and it's called select and delete. And what you do is you just click on it and anything that you do not want to cut out, you just click on. So there, it took away all of the white area. We can undo that. The other option you have is to click on this erase tool and you can make your brush or your circle, big or small, this is like your eraser tip, I guess. And you can erase it manually like this. Say you wanted to cut it out like that. You can do that as well. But let's go back to this one. We also have an option down here that says show advanced options. And let's see what that has. Okay, what this is, is this is telling it to reduce the number of colors that it's looking at. So the lower the number, the less detail you're going to have and the less it's going to be trying to find areas to cut out. The color tolerance. The color tolerance is if I were to click on this, if I put the color tolerance really low, and this probably isn't going to be a very good example of color tolerance, but let's put the color tolerance really low. We'll put it at one. And if I click on this part of the green, it's only going to delete those areas that is exactly that shade of green. If I put the color tolerance at 80, it's going to say anything that's within 80% of that color. So let's see what that does. So it erased all of that. So that's the difference. But for this image, since it's just a two colored image, we don't really need to go into the advanced settings. We can simply select the select and delete tool and click on the white. And now let's look at our preview. And that looks pretty good. That is, the red lines represent the cut line. So we're going to continue to step three. Okay, here it gives you a chance to name it. I just had this called logo cricket. And you can tag it if you want. Now this little box right here is for if I were going to want to print this image and keep it in green and keep it exactly like this, and you're going to get into this more when we do the print and cut, then you would check this box. But if you simply just want the cut lines, you're just going to put some green paper in and you want to cut this out, you just uncheck that box. This is going to save just the cut lines and we'll click save image. And now it's going to show right here in our uploaded images. We're going to check up, click the check mark and insert image. And now we have, this is exactly what it's going to cut. If we hit go on our mat, there you see your cut lines. And if you remember, we can look over here and make sure it's on cut. If we wanted to put a pen into the Explorer, we could click on right. And what that would do is instead of cutting it, it's going to draw with your pen right around these cut lines. So we can go over here and go back to cut. Okay, so let's get rid of, well, you know what? I'm just gonna leave that image there so you can see the difference. Let's go back to upload image. And again, the method we just did is going to be the same for the JPG file, the GIF file, and the BMP file. Let's try this PNG file, and I think you'll be able to see the difference. Let's upload image, continue to step one, browse, and I have the same photo right here, but it's a PNG file. Let's open that. And again, I'm going to click on complex, continue. And now you see the difference. We don't have to clean it up. We don't need to remove anything. If we look on the preview, 
it's already perfectly set up to cut around those lines. So it makes it just, it takes one step out of the process. So let's continue. And again, unless we're going to print this or need the, the green, we can take this off and save image. And here it is. And we'll insert that. And there's our PNG file. Okay, so what does that leave? Now we're on to the vector uploads. This includes SVG files and DXF files. Quite often when you buy a file from an online store, it will they will give you both formats, the SVG and the DXF. I'm going to show you the SVG. So let's find an SVG. We're going to click on vector upload. We're going to browse. And I have an SVG right here. We'll use this one. And again, we can name it. We can label it. Since this is an SVG file, we don't get the screen to clean it up. It's already been cleaned up. All that the Design Space software sees is the image, and it's already been outlined. So all we have to do is name it, and tag it, and save image. And again, it's going to come in right here. We can click on it, insert image. And here is our SVG file. So as you can see, all of them work. You can do the same thing with a JPEG file, with a PNG file, and an SVG file. The JPEG takes the most work. The PNG doesn't require as much cleanup. And the SVG file, if you have it available, is your choice because it's already been all cleaned up for you. You don't have to do anything. You just have to import it into your software. The JPEG is the option you're going to use if you're using clip art or something that you found on the internet and you're trying to make a cut file out of it. You're probably going to end up with a JPEG file. PNG files are often included in digital kits and we can do the same thing with these images that we did in the last video. We can go in and double click we can change the color. That's the JPEG file. Here's the PNG file. Oops. And our SVG file. We can also change these from cut. If we wanted to cut that image. We could change it to write, which then is going to draw that with the Cricut pens. You could change it to score. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but you could. And we can also print and we will explore the print and cut in the next video. So I hope this helps you understand the difference between the JPEG, the PNG, and the SVG files. The difference between basic upload and vector upload. So the basic upload is where you're going to use JPEG, GIF, PNG or BMP, and if you forget, it's written right there for you. And if you have an SVG or a DXF file, it will be right here for you. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. The next video, we're going to look at the print and cut, and we're going to do that from start to finish. If you're on Facebook, please stop by our Facebook group. I love LUV, my Cricut. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks.